Hello, my name is Salman Hamid and I'm Assistant Professor of Integrated Science and Humanities at Hampshire College. I'm Kevin Anderson. I teach courses in film and anthropology at the University of Massachusetts and this is Film Autopsy. Hello and welcome to a film autopsy of Young Adult, new film by director Jason Reitman. Well, let's look at the trailer first. What are you doing back in Mercury? Or you, you move back or? Of course not. Gross. Here's the deal. Buddy Slade and I are meant to be together, and I'm here to get him back. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's married with a kid on the way. No, nope, kid's here. I'm cool with it. I mean, I've got baggage, too. I would keep all of this to yourself. I would I would find a therapist. <laughs> that new baby of his is just darling. Have you seen it? Up close? Shot. You know what? Oh my god. She's an old time ambassador. <laughs> god, you are a piece of work. Can I help you find something? I'm going to a rock concert with an old flame. Let's show him what he's been missing. No, he's seen me recently. He knows. But his wife hasn't seen me in a while, so. You can come to the city with me like we always planned. Mavis, I'm a married man. No, we can beat this thing together. <sighs> All right, so as you can see from the trailer, Char Charlize Theron plays a woman who's coming back to her hometown. It's kind of this, you know, revisit my hometown, revisit my high school kind of scenario. And uh, she's going there with a plan to get back together with her old beau from high school. Um, it's, it's, you know, directed by Jason Reitman, who's done some very good work in the past with Juno and Thank You for Smoking and Up in the Air. And to some extent, this film reminded me a little bit of Up in the Air, but I'm not sure if we'll get into that. Um, and screenwriter Diablo Cody, who also wrote Juno. Um, this one kind of bored me. Well, uh, we can come back to, uh, to this <laughs> aspect, uh, but, but I actually really liked the small details in the film or just right from uh, from the title. I actually really liked all of his films, uh, and uh, including this one, and I'll come back to it, why I liked it, but... Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, so, so it, it starts with sort of like small details, so just in the title shot. I actually really like all of his films, and their titles are metac meticulous. So for example, in this mm. one, uh, Charlie Theron character, uh, Mavis, uh, she is driving from Minneapolis to Mercury, uh, Minnesota, and she's driving in a small, cute car, and uh, she's putting in a cassette tape. Now, many of you don't know what a cassette tape is, but long time ago, <laughs> people used to have music on it. Uh, but the title is actually talking about all these variations of how a cassette player works. That's right, and it's a mixtape that her beau had given her back in high school. And and that was uh, so, so. So one thing, because I remember in Up in the Air, the title sequence was oh, basically right. all the shots from the airplane. I don't know, and, and he apparently shot all those for that particular title. I think it was like 50 or 30 or 40 or 50 shots of from the top from the plane, what you see believe. Right. Here, I got engrossed in the fact that he was looking at all these variations of how cassette player works, like cassette tape gears works, little and gears and all of and those things. But it also was a very nice um, setting up of the movie because here is perhaps a person who is stuck in time, who is stuck in the 80s and 90s and hasn't really gotten out of it. And so I really liked uh, the beginning and how it set it up. Okay, I'll give you that. Uh, it's a very inventive title sequence, <laughs> perhaps one of the more exciting aspects to the film. I just found the story to be a little bit, you know, just kind of a connect the dots kind of screenplay. She comes back, there's some predictable elements that happen in terms of things not going exactly as she had thought. Um, the, the kinds of characters that she encounters, uh, the character of Matt 
is, is certainly an interesting addition to the film. He uh, plays a uh, somebody who in high school was kind of, you know, had been bullied and certainly had his, he had his locker right next to um, Charlize Theron and she doesn't even remember who he was. Um, and uh, so, but the film brings them together like, you know, maybe 10 years later. But out, outside of that, I just, I didn't find anything new on this subject matter of revisiting one's high school, being kind of stuck in your, in your youth uh, that other films haven't addressed already and done so in a much funner and exciting way, like Hot Time Machine. I don't think so. I, and here is the reason why. I mean, a lot of these other films have sort of like a redemptive element to it. And you'd often time like, no, somebody learns a lesson at the end or something. In this movie, actually, <clears throat> the character, you tend to sort of like, not really like her, or you like her even, or dislike her even more towards the as, end. As the film progresses. As the film progresses. And, and, and at the end, w when the movie is ending also, you, and again, I'm not giving away the ending per se, but you get a feel that, no, she hasn't learned this kind of, uh, she hasn't gone through a redemptive phase, even though there are some sequences which might suggest. And I think that was really smart. Uh, the writing in the movie is very smart. The dialogue uh, is excellent. And, and I think that particular aspect to that was interesting. In fact, it reminded me a little bit um, on a more serious note. I mean, it is, it is a caustic film. It's not like Juno. It's not like Up in the Air where you like those characters. It, it is a little bit more like Thank You for Smoking, uh, but even more caustic than that. Right, but, right. But what it reminded me of was um, Everything Must Go, uh, the Will Ferrell film that came out uh, earlier this year, which was an excellent film an underrated film, but sort of like dealing with the issues of alcoholism and, and dealing with that type of a thing. Well, this and film deals with alcoholism, or it's just, it's just certainly there. And I love the scene when she is <laughs> back at her parents' house. Like, she comes back to town. She doesn't even look up her parents. Her mother has to essentially track her down. And at one point, she's sitting at the, like, lunch table with them. And she's, you know, and we already know this as an audience because she's boozing, like, throughout the entire film. She says to her parents, you know, I think I'm an alcoholic. And her parents are like, oh, dear. <laughs> you know, oh, what are you talking about? And it's, it's kind of a, it's a, quite a sad moment um, because we do get a sense that this woman has not changed and that she probably never will change. She will always be, you know, desired by men and, and envied by other women. She's the, you know, the, the tall, blonde, beautiful woman that is inside quite troubled. And I can relate to that. I, I appreciate that complexity to the construction of the character. But I think when you say that she doesn't learn anything, uh, there's no redemptive quality to her character and the film. I agree with you there, but I kind of found the ending a little too pat. It kind of says, you know, uh, you know, we really can't change who we are. We can just try to be the best uh, we can of, of what we are. And no, no, no. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think so. I think yeah. that wasn't. It. <laughs> it's but. totally there. So Mon is. As Al Pacino says, it brought me back in. I thought we were done with the autopsy. But so tell me, what, what changes in the end? Well, this so so you, were, you were saying that she's just sent back, like, you know, that she can still keep on doing whatever she's doing. But, but I think the movie is not sentimental at all. And it doesn't take the side of, uh, of the townspeople saying that, oh, the townspeople are happy with their simple lives and she's happy over there. No, we actually see her being really unhappy. In fact, right from the beginning, we see her, in fact, that's before the title sequence, that she's passed out on the bed. Right. Her apartment that is... She's still living like a high schooler. Exactly, yeah, and, and yeah. she is extremely unhappy. She in is. fact, everything is triggered by the fact that her, uh, she get a picture of, over an email of that her ex-boyfriend has given birth. As a, uh, you know, as, yeah, as a new child. As uh, a new child. And, yeah. So I was just gonna say, because there is one character in this film that is genuinely happy, and for me, I thought this could have been explored a little bit more, and that is her cousin, who is crippled and has to get around in a wheelchair. And he had faced a very, it's just talked about briefly in the film, she meets him and ends up running into him in a bar, and he has overcome his disability, and he is I mean, literally, he's one of the only people in the film who's really happy with what he's doing and well, where he is in life. What about Beth? Uh, her, her, uh, her ex her ex-boyfriend's wife. Yeah, she uh, seems a bit, you know, she seems like content. She's in that drum. I mean, she's yeah, content. she's happy. She's happy, and and yeah. her boyfriend is happy too. I mean, I mean, he's going there. I don't see any reason why to think that they were unhappy. So, I mean, I think in this movie, it doesn't take what I really liked about it was it doesn't take sides of oh, this kind of a small town life is better than this city life, and those. I, I think it avoided those cliches very well. But 
not in a very interesting way. I, I, I oh, thought, and it provides no sense of, of, of kind of transformation or any you but, know, moral but, or spiritual or community transcendence in the film at all. It's like everybody's oh, just. Oh, so you want a message film. So you want. <laughs> but this <laughs> film is pretending to be message. a message film. No, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I think, I think you went to a wrong movie. I think you should have gone to a church. <laughs> Stars and you